evening, everybody. I'm just gonna change screens over. Hello. I'm gonna mute this music just so Facebook doesn't get cranky at me because I can only push my luck with background music for so long before they get cranky and we get muted. So hello to everybody jumping on. I am Laura. Hello to all of our new members. We've had quite a few of you come in over the holiday period. We are in part two of our four part beginner's guide series. The first part we did just before Christmas, we did how to glitter uh, different ways that you can glitter your first tumbler. Uh, tonight we're talking tips, tricks and terminology. Um, I have a glitter demonstration that I want to do first and foremost so that I can get that out of the way. And then um, I was in two minds about whether I should do um, like a slideshow with all the information and talk through it or whether I should do it like this where I just work on a couple of orders and talk to you while I work. Uh, the vote amongst the admins was you get to watch me work on a couple of 12 ounce wine tumblers. Um, I actually released my first mystery box for my client base um, about a week ago now. Um, so I'm going to start working on the 12 ounce cups that they're going to get in their boxes tonight. Otherwise, this is a very verbal tutorial. Um, anything that you miss, it will be saved for replay. Um, otherwise, the comment section is open. You are free to ask any questions you like, even if it doesn't pertain to the topic that we're talking about. You are also welcome if you're a little bit more experienced or you have a different way of doing things. You are more than welcome to jump into the comments and give your point of view or your tips and tricks as well. Uh, I do want to put in a quick disclaimer. Everything that I say tonight is based up on my own personal knowledge, my experiences. Um, I've been at this for just over two years now. Um, so it's all my own knowledge and opinions and experiences. Uh, they may not line up with some other crafters, but generally speaking, what we're going to be discussing tonight is stuff that is across the board. Um, that you'll start to see the more that you interact with tumble groups the more you'll start to see a lot of what we're talking about tonight so the first thing i want to start off with is different types of glitter um we live the tumbler world is a very sparkly world i'm just going to dismiss that hello i can see comments hello okay we've got comments going that's good i thought it had jammed okay um Yes, the tumble world is very sparkly. You will see people talk about different kinds of glitters in regards to um, pearls and holographics and metallics and stuff like that. I'm gonna give you some examples of that. I'm also gonna give you examples of different sizes, especially when you're buying glitter for the first time. Um, you can get a little bit overwhelmed by the selection. Uh, when you're first starting out, I would definitely um, recommend that you have a um, variety of all different sizes um, but the one thing that I would recommend you start off with um, is a fine and a chunky mix of an opal which is a white like this one right this is what we call a cheat glitter and basically if you spray paint your tumbler any color you like so this is white and purple because that's what we're doing tonight um, but you put a white opal over the top of a spray painted base and the opal glitter will change to whatever color is of the base and give it a really nice sparkle so i do recommend you start your collection with a white opal this one is tambourine from sparkles by carby but we're going to start with what is called an ultra fine glitter i'm going to spread it out and hope that the camera picks it up this is like super fine stardust so that. and that is what we call an ultra fine um, that's really good for adding just a tiny tiny little bit to epoxy um, just to give it a subtle sparkle but not overpowering that's what I use my ultra fines for and then the next up is what we call a fine glitter is a little bit chunkier this is tequila sunrise from glitter your world so without dropping it you can see that those pieces are just a little bit bigger but they're not what we would consider like the next stage step up is a one millimeter so this is what we, we call fine 
so it's still let's try and spread it out so you can see a bit better that's fine okay. so the next sides up from there um, can also be called fine but usually in the description they do mention that it is a one millimeter cut and that is this here this is Muriel's wedding from sparkles by Carby and now this is a mix this does have fine glitter in it as well but the pieces the one millimeter pieces in this are really obvious so see especially on the outskirts see how that those pieces are bigger again but they're still not chunky this is what we call one millimeter hi Kelly Anna, you're right, but um, I'm in the habit at the moment where, oh, you'll see tonight, right? This is going to have a water slide at the top, and I'm going to use a fine glitter, and then once this is done, the water slide goes over the fine. But you are right, if you want to keep that colour without overpowering, you can definitely put ultra fines underneath your, um, your decals and your water slides. Okay, so this is what everybody would recognize as a chunky. This is Toffee Apple by Glitter Your World. And this is, whoop. Uh, anybody that came to the virtual Christmas party, this is the red that I used on your gifts. I have actually finished all of them now, so they're getting posted out in the next couple of days. I do apologize for the delay on them. But that is a 2.5 millimeter cut, right? And that is what we consider a chunky. Now, a lot of the Australian glitter suppliers are now doing, well, I'm pouring it out both sides, uh, are now doing custom mixes and chunky mixes, right? Which is one like this, where it has at least three different sizes in it. Now, this has the fine, the one millimeter, and the 2.5 millimeter. This is Lyra from the Galaxy range at DJ Designs. I'm not a pink person, but this is one of my favorite pinks. But I'll try and spread it out in a way where you can see. Okay, so there's the fine and the one millimeter. And then if you can kind of see up the top here where I tried to spread it out, it has fine and the one millimeter and the two and a half. So if you see anybody talking about custom mixes or chunky mixes, they usually almost always have this um, 2.5 cut in it and then at least two other sizes as well. So they're really good, um, especially if you haven't used chunky before. Sometimes using a mix is better because you get better coverage than trying to get um, a full coverage with chunky. Um, because it does have the other sizes, they kind of fill in the gaps and give you better coverage. So, that is the different sizes. And then we have, this is what you consider opal, as we've already discussed. See how you get the colour change through there, right? That's what we call opals. Um, this also has an opal effect to it. It's where you get that multi-dimension change. Um, that's probably not a good example. I should have brought more examples over. Hmm. Okay, this technically is a metallic, right? These are your high flash glitters. Um, what else have we got? I need a hollow. I need a hollow. Hang on one second, I'll find a hollow. Okay, this is, no, that's a metallic. No, it's not, it's a hollow, right? See how you have the flash through, maybe it is a metallic. When I hold it up to the camera, it looks like a metallic. Okay, hang on, that wasn't the best example. 
I thought I brought an iridescent, um, a, um, oh, that's what we're missing, iridescence. Sorry guys, I have a lot of glitters, but never the ones that I'm looking for. Hang on. This is me being prepared, are you impressed? Ha, okay. This is... We're gonna use silver. All right, so this is a holographic. See the rainbow, right? This is what everybody's been using on the Tacket Cups where they get the holographic effect. This is the kind of glitter that they've been using and this is what you call a holographic. That was a much better example. This is definitely a metallic. See how you get that high flush through it but it doesn't really, like it's just sparkly. That's a metallic. This is an iridescent. Which I'm gonna... It has a slight color shift to it, but not as much as what the hollow does. See that? They're your iridescence. Okay, it does. <laughs> Am I making sense? I should, I will take, I will, I will actually thinking about it. I will take pictures of the different sizes and the different types and label them and upload them tomorrow when I have sunlight coming through my window because me casting a shadow. What would you use chameleon on? Bought them, love the color ship, haven't used them yet. I am using Freddo tonight, which is a color shift. Um, I use mine for whatever the hell I feel like it. Um, probably the most well-known example of a chameleon glitter is the walk in the park tumblers. Um, a lot of the, like the green to purple and the blue to purple and stuff like that that you see in those cups, they're chameleon glitters or color shift glitters. But yes, anything that's color shift or labeled chameleon is usually more than one color, hence the name. Um, a lot of them shift from one to another. Um, you can get some uh, glitters that have two or three different shifts in them. You can also get flakes and pigment powders that have a wider color spectrum as well. But this, I'll see if I can get it. This one goes like blue, green, purple. See that? See this way it's more blue. That's a color shift. But this this one is my favorite glitter at the moment. Um, the castle. Uh, this is uh, from Sparkles by Carby Designs. Sorry. Um, I also got the December Creative box from her that had the castle series in it, and they I'm using them on one of my cups tonight. They came a very close second to overtaking Freddo as my new favorite glitter. But no, I think I'm gonna stick with Freddo for a while because it's just so pretty. But yes, that's called Freddo. Okay, so now that I've made a big ass mess, look, I've spilt it all here. <laughs> I'm gonna get working on my cups and we're gonna talk about some other things. Uh, should I be going back to part one? Donna, uh, part one is completely different topic. Uh, part one is just going through different methods that you can use to glitter your very first tumbler. This is tips, tricks, and terminology. Uh, the next one that we're doing is uh, different ways to do um, alcohol ink swirls. And then the final one is teaching you two different ways to achieve a really pretty ombre so that you don't have like the harsh lines. Um, which, I mean, we're kind of venturing into that tonight. I'm doing this. Please don't pay any attention to my spray paint job. I dropped it. Um, but this has been covered in glitter anyway, so nobody's going to see what a shitty paint job it is. Um, but if you watch, I'm not going to go into what I'm doing with this tonight, but if you watch closely with what I'm doing, it's one of the ways, one of the easier ways to ombre um, a cup. So we're going through that tonight. But no, you don't need to go back to part I mean, go back to part one if you want to watch it, but that actually has nothing to do with what we're talking about tonight. So you're good. 
Okay, so while I glove up and mix my epoxy, I'm going to start and move on to safety. Um, now, I'm quite a big advocate for um, safety and uh, PPE when it comes to resin work. Um, I'm of, again, personal belief. I'm of the personal belief that working with resin is probably not as bad as, but sort of akin to um, smoking, I suppose. Like, when everybody first started smoking, nobody knew the dangers. Um, and it came out a long way down the line that long-term smoking uh, causes some health uh, issues. I have that same belief about working with resin um, without using any safety equipment. Um, I feel like if you're not protecting yourself, especially if you're using resin on a like for long periods of time every day or for lots of days at a time, um, we don't really know what it's going to be doing long term breathing because uh, um, all epoxy, when it's curing, does release toxic fumes. Um, it's only once it's fully cured that it's not toxic anymore. So you think about if you're not protecting yourself from breathing those fumes in all the time while you're working with resin, down the line it may or may not cause health problems. But I'm a huge advocate when it comes to safety. So gloves are a must uh, always. Um, I'm usually pretty good. Uh, the last tutorial I did where I did the mermaid tray, I wasn't wearing gloves and I failed a bit there. But usually gloves. Um, you also need uh, safety goggles if you have sensitive eyes. I wear glasses so I try to convince myself that wearing glasses will do the same job. Um, and a, a half face respirator mask that has the interchangeable filters. Now I do know that LBB resin were stocking them at one stage. I will have to confirm if she has any in stock. But LBB resin was selling the right ones for resin work. I got mine from Bunnings a couple of years ago now. Um, that's my one. It's a 3M one. Right, it's got the two head straps. One goes around the top and one goes around the back. And then it's got these bits that screw off. And in here, if I can get it out, is where the filter gets replaced. Right. So I got mine from Bunnings. Um, from memory, I think it was only about 40 or 50 bucks. It wasn't super expensive. Um, and these filters I change out every three months. Okay, so make sure you protect your respiratory system first and foremost. Uh, when I do my live videos or when I'm filming, I don't use my um, respirator mask unless I'm doing a really big pour uh, where the fumes are noticeable, which I have not done yet for a film. Um, but otherwise, I don't use my respirator mask when I'm doing lives. Um, but otherwise, because like you won't be able to hear me. Otherwise, please make sure you look after yourself. Um, it's also um, incredibly important that you work in a well-ventilated area. Um, have your fans going, have your aircon going, have the windows open, have the doors open. As much as you can to get that airflow through is what you need to do as well. That's safety. Hang on, I'm just marking off. I wrote a list of everything that we should be talking about. Okay, so moving on to different kinds of resins. But before we do that, Joanne, um, yeah, I, uh, unless somebody can point me in the direction. Um, sorry, I'll just read your comment out loud. It says, thanks for clearing up about resin curing is still toxic as I told it wasn't. Okay. Um, as far as I know, and if somebody can link me to um, evidence otherwise, all epoxy that um, we use for tumblers, that we use for molds, whatever, um, whether it's food safe or not, will be toxic until it is fully cured. Um, it continues to give off fumes. Um, you can't see them. Most of the time you can't smell them unless you're doing a really big amount at a time. But they are there. It is proven. Um, and I mean, I suppose it's better to be safe than sorry. Um, if anybody has any evidence to the contrary or has found a resin that is... I mean, even low VOC, if they claim to be low VOC, that just means that it doesn't smell 
as bad, but it still gives off fumes. That's just what epoxy is. Um, the chemical reaction that's created to harden the resin is what causes the fumes. Uh, jump in, give it a go. Uh, oh no, Nicole, that's no good. Um, yeah, uh, Nicole's dad, sorry, just reading it out loud for anybody just catching up. Um, Nicole's dad was working in the mechanic industry um, and ended up on a disability pension because he wasn't wearing, I'm going to assume he wasn't wearing protective gear. Um, but I mean, really, it's just common sense, isn't it, to protect yourself from anything. Um, even when, I mean, it doesn't just have to be like curing epoxy. Um, please make sure you also wear a mask anytime that you are sanding epoxy because epoxy dust can be highly toxic if you breathe that in as well. I will mention that while we're on the topic of um, sanding. Make sure anything to do with resin, mask up and glove up at the very least. Uh, if you do have uh, sensitive eyes or you find that your eyes get really itchy and red, like if you get hay fever and stuff, wear, go wear goggles as well. Not sure if I'm getting all the comments. Dorothy, maybe go out and go back in sometimes. That does help. Can you touch on resin and chopping boards, please? <clears throat> we are about to go into that now, Anna. There are different kinds of resin. Not all resins are created equal. If you are doing um, tumblers or chopping boards or wooden spoon handles or cheese knives or anything that may come into incidental contact with food or liquids for consumption. You have to have a, they call it limited food safe. No epoxy is 100% food safe. No food or drink should ever be in direct contact with resin, uh, which is why you see a lot of people doing cheese boards. They don't do the whole board, they just do the handle part and they leave the rest wood for you to be able to put your food on. Um, you should never ever be putting food or drink directly onto um, epoxy, even if it's food safe. All epoxy is only, uh, if it's approved to be food safe, is still only limited food safe, which means it's only good for incidental contact. Right, so if you're covering an entire cheese board with the intention of putting that cheese on the epoxy, big no-no. Um, unless you have a really good lawyer on retainer, I would strongly suggest against doing that. Um, but anything to do with food or drink, you do need what is called a FDA approved or a limited food safe resin. Now a few of those brands are, I made a list, uh, Amazing Clearcast, an AX74, which I have used personally in the past. Uh, Art Resin, which I think Annie uses, is also a really good one. I'm actually using that for my hang method tonight because I'm just, see it's gone yellow, which we'll talk about in a second as well. But I'm just trying to use up that tiny little bit, so I'm using it all for my hang methods. Uh, Diamond Coat from Just Resin is another one. I believe Stone Coat is another one. Uh, there's also one from... Uh, all-purpose coatings called APC epoxy glaze I do know a couple of people use that as well but just if you're doing tumblers please make sure that you are using a food safe uh, resin the other side of that is if you're doing keychains or jewelry or molds or anything that has nothing to do with food or drink you can use a casting resin which does not have to be food safe um, if when you're first starting out and you're just getting into it, if you want to use the same food safe resin for all of your crafts, you're more than welcome to do so. Um, but I've found the more that um, my hobby has grown, um, I now prefer to use a what, what, what we call a coating resin, which is a food safe resin for all of my cups and stuff. And anything not related to cups or food or anything, I do use a casting resin just because it helps my epoxy last a little bit longer, especially in a pandemic when it can be hard to get stock. Um, but also casting resin generally tends to be a little bit cheaper as well. So I don't want to be wasting my good stuff when I don't need to. So I'm just mixing up a little bit. I'm going to do these cups with a hang method tonight. 
Cutting on them is also a no-no, Anna. Yes, um, as soon as you slice a blade through epoxy, you've broken the seal. Um, and then all kinds of nasty bacteria and germs and yucks can get into those cuts in the epoxy and just fester and, yeah, no, that's not a good idea at all. You never ever try to cut on a cheese board. Um, I've also seen um, in... Uh, New South Wales in the marketplace for New South Wales there are people popping up that have been doing like dip bowls <coughs> but doing the inside of the dip bowl um, my personal opinion is don't do that either um, because depending on how I mean if you've got that bowl sitting on a hot table out in the sun at a family barbecue and it's full of hummus what do you think is going to seep into the hummus when the epoxy starts to heat up so again Incidental means, you know, touching every now and then is okay, but you don't want food actually resting on it for long periods of time. <coughs> um, with tumblers, um, obviously it's a little bit different because yes, they're technically putting their mouths on the epoxy when they're sipping, um, but again, it's only incidental. It's not as if they're chewing and licking and sucking on that edge. Um, of their cup uh, which is why I also encourage a lot of my customers to please use their slide lids because obviously then it's cutting down on the contact as well um, from the two different kinds of resin which is coating resin is usually food safe like what we use for tumblers and a casting resin is what you use for molds and jewelry and keychains and stuff you will hear people what about liquidy split? Um, I've never used it, Natalie. I know that there's a pre-order or buying going on at the moment. I haven't used it personally, but from what I know, I do believe it is limited food safe. Like it is okay to use for tumblers. Um, is Lorene here? Lorene, if you're here, can you jump in and answer Natalie about liquidy split, please? I know she uses it. I'm pretty sure she's the one that's trying to do the buy-in. But hopefully somebody jumps in for you, Natalie. Um, okay, uh, you will also hear the terms UV resin and UV inhibitor. All resins over time go yellow. Right, see this one's starting to turn. Okay. Um, it's not really a problem unless you do a lot of white cups they are going to go yellow um, it could take 12 months it could take a couple of years eventually all epoxies yellow some of them do turn yellow quicker than others um, to stop and uh, I know for a fact that EX74 which is what I mentioned before they have it in theirs um, a UV inhibitor is something that they add to the epoxy to stop it from yellowing so fast so if this is a concern for you, make sure you find a food safe epoxy that has a UV inhibitor in it. The other thing that they talk about in regards to UV is UV resin, which is, where's my bottle gone? It is a resin that you use for like keychains and little earrings and stuff. I can't find, oh, it's right in front of me, darn right. This is the one that I use. This needs to be cured by a UV lamp. So like, you know, the ones that they use for gel nails, right? UV resin is resin that must cure under a lamp or sunlight. Um, epoxy that has a UV inhibitor means that it's got something in it that stops it from yellowing so quick. So that is different kinds of resins. Are you all still with me or am I going a bit quick? Is it still okay to use when yellow? It definitely is, Laurel. Um, this one's starting to go yellow, so I'm using it up. I would not recommend using it on a white cup or a white glittered cup, um, obviously, because you're going to see it. Um, but if you have it, if you use it for like an ink cup that's on a black base, or um, you're putting super bright colors over the top of it. Um, you can get away, depending on how dark 
your uh, cup is you can get away with using yellowed resin as a final coat but otherwise if it's gone real yellow and you're a little bit worried about it use it for your hang methods use it for your first coats use it for like your glitter applications and stuff like anything where it's not going to be the final coat just use it for that um, but yeah I would if it's gone really really yellow um, I wouldn't be using it for final coats what resin do I use Angela at the moment I am using uh, EX 74 art resin and diamond coat um, I use different resins for different things because they've got different thicknesses um, I'm not going to go into that tonight um, and then for all of my molds and stuff I use platinum super clear um, I've used platinum ultra clear before as well and that's really good um, I've also used the Aldax clear cast um, for my molds as well that is not food safe but that is a really easy resin to use for molds and stuff when you first start out. Anna, are you telling me to scroll up? Uh, Kel, Barnes Epoxy Glass. Um, as far as I'm aware, no. Uh, no Barnes Epoxies are food safe. That may have changed. Uh, if anybody knows if that has changed, again, please jump in and correct me. Um, coasters, uh, Dorothy, I use casting resin like non food safe resin for my coasters for the simple fact that I don't think anybody's going to be putting food on their coasters um, uh, the wine caddies and stuff I do use food safe resin um, but coasters um, I, I was for a very long time using um, food safe resin for everything um, it's only been in the past six months or so that I've started using casting resin for things that don't need food but when you think about coasters really I mean nobody's going to be sucking or chewing on their coasters I hope um, but it's to put the cup on and the drink is in the cup so there's no contact of the drink on it whatsoever uh, having said that on my care cards for my coasters I do put that it's made from um, casting resin and then it can't be used for like if people have bickies with their tea or anything like that don't put your bickies on the coasters I've said that they are for glasses mugs etc only um, so maybe that's an idea as well just to cover yourselves but personally no I don't I use casting resin now so I'm just scrolling through comments um, Anna, I have never added, I know you can add blue ink, like blue alcohol ink, just the tiniest little bit um, to counter the yellow. I've personally never done it because I use my epoxy up so quick that it very rarely goes yellow. Um, this is only starting to yellow now because I stopped using it for a while because I was having a panic that I couldn't get any more. So I started rationing my art resin, um, but my art resin sits right under my window and now that it's summer, it's starting to go that's what causes it to yellow guys is UV light so to protect your epoxy maybe keep it in a cupboard or something but my my art resins right under my window which is why I think it's starting to really yellow quite quickly now um, the UV resin or not the light um, Laurel I got mine off eBay um, I would recommend you go at least a 42 watt uh, I did have a 36 watt when I first started using UV resin um, but it was taking like six seven eight minutes when it should have only been taken three or four so i bumped up to i think mine's a 46 it's either a 46 or a 48 and it's brilliant um so i would recommend going at least a 42 what um, i see people using leftover epoxy for cups for key rings is that okay it definitely is natalie um you can use food safe resin for whatever you like um if you're only starting out and you only want to buy one type of resin, that's what I was doing for over a year. Um, was using just the, the the same food, like the same two food safe resins for everything. Um, but as my volume and my customer base started increasing, that's when I started looking into ways of trying to make my epoxy stretch a little bit further. And that's why I've now swapped to using casting resins for non-food and drink related stuff and coating resins for food related stuff. 
that you can as you can't use non-food safe resins for tumblers big no-no but you can use tumbler resin for things that aren't tumblers it can go one way but it can't go the other just remember that if it's not food safe it has no place near cups mugs anything like that um I use a lot of my leftover epoxy for stuff as well, if you, you can't really see because all the glitters are in the way. This was left over, this was left over, this was left over. Right, I'm always making, because it's, it's like when I cook pasta or rice, right? I either don't make enough to feed everybody or I make enough to feed a village for the next six months. And it's a little bit like that with my epoxy as well. Okay, um, scrolling down. Does the diamond coat have the UV inhibitor? Christy, I can't comment on that. Um, I have only just ordered it to try it for the first time uh, of a recommendation from a friend <clears throat> because when I ordered it, um, I couldn't find EX74 anywhere and I needed resin like now. Um, but I still have a little bit of my EX left. Uh, I'll probably be opening my diamond coat in the next couple of days, but I can definitely look into that and reach out to just resin and see if I can get an answer for you. Um, unless somebody else knows if Diamond Coat has a UV inhibitor in it. Otherwise I can find that out for you. Okay, so what I am doing now is called a hang method. It is something that you are going to hear a lot about but you may not know what it is. So I am going, well, first of all, I'll move that up just a little bit. I'm going to go through some terminology. This is a hang method. It is a very, very thin amount of resin. It is usually used for um, glitter applications, okay? Or if you've done a wood grain and you just want a thin coat um, between the wood grain and a water slide, this is what you do. Now it's called the hang method because it doesn't have to go on a turner. You literally just hang it up and you let it stay. So because it's not turning and leveling out, you want the tiniest, I've already got glitter on here. You want the tiniest, tiniest amount, right? Where you've actually got to pull through the resin on the cup. This is starting to bleed, but that's really pretty. Can you see that? I don't think the purple was completely dry, but that's quite pretty. I think I'll leave it like that. That was a happy accident to happen on cat. Oh, no, maybe not that part. We'll push that part back down and pretend that didn't happen. That was a happy little accident to happen on camera, wasn't it? Okay, so hang method is a very, very thin coat of resin that you use uh, when you don't want to turn. Uh, now, if you go back to part one of the beginner's guide where we went through different ways to glitter a tumbler, the hang method is covered a little bit more there. Um, but that's basically what the hang method is. Uh, if you hear people talking about first coats and final coats, first coats usually happen after you've glittered, right? So once um, I've glittered this tonight and it cures overnight, tomorrow I'm going to want to put my first coat of epoxy over the top. First coats are usually thicker because you want that to cover and give a nice, even, non-bumpy finish. Or um, if you're using chunkies, you're going to need more than one coat to get it smooth. Um, but generally speaking, your first coat goes over your um, inks or your wood grains or your glitters or anything like that to seal it all in. And that is a first coat. So technically speaking, even though we've just done the hang method, once this is glittered, this isn't considered the first coat. The first coat is what goes over the first medium that you use on a cup. Okay. Uh, then you've got flood coats. Now, when I first started and somebody told me about flood coats, I literally thought you meant you had to put so much epoxy onto the cup that it was flooding the cup and it worked like a final coat because it's called a flood coat, right? No. <laughs> a flood coat is all of the coats that you do between your first coat and your final coat. So once I glitter this and I do my first coat, if I find that it's all rough and or I've used, because I'm using this chunky mix, there's some bits sticking up or whatever else, I will sand that back and then I will put a flood coat over it, okay? 
and your flood coats are not as thick as your first or your final coat um, I think from memory um, it's about one eighth of an inch right so not super thick but not hang method thin either you want it enough to cover what you've just sanded back and then from there if you have to keep resanding right every coat that goes over those layers up to your final coat is called a flood coat right so you've got your hang method you've got your first coat with which is your first full coverage coat all of the coats between that first coat and the final coat is called a flood coat and then you have your final coat which is when your tumbler is finished and you're ready to seal it all in and get it to cure for the most resins are 72 hours for a full cure um, you go to your final coat which is a nice thick glassy coat you want to make sure it has no bubbles no fish eyes no nothing otherwise if it does it's not your final coat final coats are very rarely the final coat they usually end up being a flood coat and then you have to do a final coat again so if your final coats don't ever become your final coats don't stress out about that either you're not the only one it happens to the best of us okay but your final coat is a thicker coat that goes on right at the end you want that to be as perfect as you can with epoxy um, and you want to make sure that it covers up to your rims and around the bottoms if you're doing your bottoms as well to create that nice seal Anyone used Health of Mind Art Resin? No, Donna, I haven't. But if it's an art resin, it usually means it's not food safe. So you can use that for um, your molds or your keychains, jewelry. Uh, people use it to coat um, acrylic pores on canvases and stuff, right? Anything that's not food or drink related is um, suitable for art resin. Except for j just to, you know, make it hard this brand is actually called art resin right this is food safe but um, otherwise if it is advertised as an art resin or a casting resin it's usually not food safe um, I like the bleed blade I know wasn't it a happy accident okay so I'm gonna be using tambourine and freddo on this um, if anybody saw my drink bottle that I posted just before Christmas with the um, orchids and the name Annette on it, this is for her. So I thought I would match up her drink bottle with her wine cup. Um, Anna says, didn't we all think that with flood coats? Man, if it took me, like it, was, it wasn't weeks, it was months before somebody went, <laughs> no Laura, that's not what a flood coat is. So I was a little bit embarrassed. So I thought that was one thing that I did want to cover tonight is the different terminology for the different coats of resin. Just because I felt really stupid <laughs> when I found out that it wasn't. What is a fish eye? Joanne. A fish eye usually happens if you have um, like oils or imperfections or anything on your cup when you go to add resin. And they just, it's like a bald patch. Right. It's like they hit middle age and they started losing their hair and they've just got a bald patch. Um, and it appels. Ex appels? Appels is not a word, Laura. It expels the epoxy, right? So you'll say it's all nice and shiny, nice and shiny, and then all of a sudden you've got like this circle where no epoxy wants to go near it because it smells. That's what a fish eye is. And that usually happens because maybe you touched your cup before putting the resin on it and you had a little bit of butter from when you made a sandwich earlier or what right whatever it's usually due to something something greasy or oily being on the cup before you add the resin so some it's a good idea especially if you're doing epoxy coats over epoxy coats um, it's always a good idea um, to spray your cup with alcohol and give it a little wipe down first it just removes any impurities now what i'm doing at the moment is just because it's a chunky mix some of the pieces like to stand at attention like they're going on a military march so i'm just 
making sure that they all sit down because then it will eliminate a lot of sanding once it's cured. Okay, see how pretty that is? This is one of my favorite glitters at the moment. I'm so in love with this one. Okay, so that's fish eye. Um, what else have we got? Oh, cup prep. Guys, I mentioned this in my last live. Don't ever engage in a cup prep debate in a Tumblr group on Facebook. It is not worth the anxiety that comes with it. Uh, prepping your cups is possibly the biggest thing to divide the Tumblr community. Um, a lot, and when I say cup prepping, I mean everything you do before you start actually making the tumbler. So for me personally, I sand my cups, I then wash them with uh, soapy water and let them air dry, and then I do my first like spray paint, right? I spray paint the base and from there I go and move on. Um, there will be people that tell you that they sand every single cup and they swear by it. Um, you'll also meet people that say that they've never sanded a cup in their life and they've never had a problem. Uh, which is where in the debate lies about whether sh you should be sanding or not sanding your cups or your bottles or anything before you epoxy. Um, my personal recommendation is do it anyway. I mean, what have you got to lose? Um, in all my time that I've been doing tumblers, um, the person that I started learning off always sanded theirs, so I have always sanded mine, and I have never ever had any issues. I've had customers that have dropped their stuff, and I'll get little uh, hairline fractures and stuff, but I've never had like the big chunks that have peeled off. Uh, the only exception to that was my son's drink bottle. He actually belted it on a concrete driveway to see how long it would take for it to break. So he actually did manage to break the bottom of his drink bottle, but that was deliberate and intentional damage. <laughs> but accidental damage, so far so good. Um, but it really is personal preference. So if you don't want to sand, that's fine. If you do want to sand, that's fine. It's all personal experience. I mean, sooner or later, somebody's going to drop a cup and you're going to know how, how well your method holds up. Okay. Um, I, I do know people that have never sanded and they have kids and their kids drop their stuff all the time and they've never had like a fatal injury. Um, so it really is personal preference. But if you ever see the debate popping up in other crafting groups or even this one, just try not to engage. Everybody's got very strong opinions, it seems, about that topic in particular. Um, and people can be very nasty on Facebook. Not so much in this group, but on some other groups they can be. So if you don't feel like being personally attacked that day, don't engage in that debate. Um, okay. Diamond coat is seven days full, full cure, just an FYI. Anna, thank you for mentioning that. Every, oh no, I've got, that's all right, I'll pick that out while I talk to you. I have contamination in my tambourine. Um, always read your epoxy instructions before using it um, for the first time. So if you've been using the same brand the entire time that you've been doing tumblers and then all of a sudden it's out of stock and you have to get something else, even if you've been using epoxy for five years, right? make sure you always check the manufacturer's instructions for that specific resin. Um, because as I've just said, most resins are full cure in 72 hours. But Anna's just said that the diamond coat from Just Resin is seven days to a full cure. That means that once the cup is finished and is turning for its final coat, you cannot pass that cup on to the customer for seven days. So please make sure you always read the mixing instructions, the um, uh, material safety data sheet, and the curing times and the working times for every resin, um, even if it's not food safe, if it's just casting, any excuse me, any epoxy you use for the first time, make sure you read the full instructions just so you know what you're dealing with because it does vary from brand to brand. Okay, so that is the first one down with Freddo and Tambourine. They're both from Sparkles by Carby Designs. 
And then that's gonna have a little pug on it. A little pug, pug dog. Okay. Uh, cut, cut. Okay, so talking about curing, uh, you will hear people talking about a touch cure and people talking about a full cure. A touch cure is when you do this to the cup and it's not sticky anymore and it doesn't leave any fingerprints or anything like that. Hot tip, if you do this to a cup and you make a fingerprint or it comes up in a big string or you probably pushed your luck a little bit too soon, hit it with quickly with a heat gun. It'll self-level out and get rid of that and not mess up your coat. But if you touch it and it's dry, but it's only been like six, 12 hours, that is what we call a touch cure. Um, as long as it is not sticky at all, you can put another coat of epoxy over that if you need to. Um, if you get to a point where it's been like, say, eight to 12 hours, and you touch that cup and it's still sticky, that means it's not gonna cure at all, okay? Something's gone wrong uh, when you've been mixing it up. Maybe your um, uh, epoxy can be a little bit temperamental. You have to have exact measurements. Um, so something's gone wrong in the mixing process. That's never gonna cure. If you get to like 12 hours, 24 hours, and it's still sticky, um, that's gonna be no good. Please never, ever, ever, ever Put a coat of epoxy over a coat of epoxy that is not going to cure because that's going to stay toxic um, and uncured under your nice coat of cured epoxy and sooner or later that's going to eat away through that cured layer of epoxy um, and just cause all kinds of nasty problems and it's not real healthy either um, so if you find that the epoxy coat that you've just done is not going to cure at all unfortunately that's what we call a strip job Right, where you strip it back to the beginning and you have to start all over again. Um, a lot of us have big massive strip piles. It have, I mean, even when you've been doing it for a couple of years, you're still gonna get cups where something horrible has gone wrong at some point. And I just put mine all in a tub um, and then once every couple of months, I'll strip the whole lot if I can be bothered. Or sometimes when I have no stock left but I need one of the cups, I'll do a big strip run then. Um, but otherwise, if it has cured and it is touch dry, um, you can put another coat of epoxy over it. That's no worries at all. Um, and then a final cure is what we were just talking about with the different time frames. Um, some epoxies, well, most epoxies are 72 hours um, to a full cure, which means it's safe to pass on to family, friends, customers. Um, uh, otherwise, like... Um, what Anna said, uh, diamond coat is seven days. There is another one that is seven days as well. It might be uh, APC. There is one that is seven days as well. Um, but yeah, just double check the instructions. But please don't, just because it feels dry doesn't mean that it's fully cured. Um, never ever give um, a cup to a customer if it's still within that full cure time because as we explained earlier, um, it's going to give off fumes until it's fully cured. So you don't really want to be passing that on to customers. Um, uh, tumblers. We've only got a couple of topics to go, guys. We're going to discuss um, what you should and shouldn't do with uh, tumblers and mugs and stuff. The difference between mica powders and pigment powders. Um, and what you can use for a heat gun. So starting with the heat gun, um, you'll hear the terms hit it with heat or did you use heat and stuff like that. Um, I am gonna grab a glove. I have a really big um, Azito, like proper melt paint off the wall heat gun um, that I use. Uh, you can also use a butane torch or a little gas torch. I got this one from Bunnings. It's a little trade flame one. And it has a big lighter in it. So that's my little torch. Um, you can use a hairdryer. You can use uh, like a barbecue lighter with the really long... Um, it's not a handle. 
let's say spout <laughs> with a really long spout on it um, uh, embossing guns you know the little embossing guns that you use for embossing powders you can use them as well um, basically anything that's gonna pop your bubbles when you're doing your epoxy um, but not so hot that it's gonna melt or make it catch fire um, please don't ever use open flames if you're working with alcohol inks um, <laughs> nobody told me that so when I first did my very first ink cup and I hit it with the flames and the whole cup turned into a big flame and fireball I shit myself <laughs> looking back the the warning signs were there man like it's alcohol inks are flammable I'm pretty sure even on the bottle it says that they're flammable right don't take an open flame to an alcohol ink cup it's a disaster waiting to happen but otherwise you can use open flames um, also don't ever use heat for silicon molds um, I know that some people do but every time that I've tried I've ended up ruining my molds so now I just spray alcohol on my molds and that pops the bubbles as well uh, what else have we got to go oh, uh, different kinds of tumblers okay to start out you want to be looking for insulated drink bottles double walled insulated drink bottles double walled insulated tumblers like stainless steel tumblers uh, the double walled acrylic cups you can get away with as well anything that is double walled is safe to use the exception to that is glasses like your wine glasses and stuff because you're only going to be putting cold drinks yes there is a, a debate about condensation which I am not going to get into tonight I've never had that problem in the entire time that I've been doing glasses uh, and I started doing glasses before I started doing tumblers okay um, but because there's cold liquids going into it it's not such a problem um, I would highly recommend you steer clear of doing mugs um, unless they are the ones that are insulated like you know how you can hold them and the outside of the cup is cold even if it's filled with like piping hot coffee they are the only mugs that are safe to use uh, mugs that you can feel the heat from the outside is only going to mess with the epoxy on the outside and it's it's not going to turn out real well for you so that's really my only advice I know a lot of people do mugs um, I've done mugs in the past as well just make sure if hot liquids are going to be put into it it is double walled Otherwise, uh, we have I get all of my glasses from Kmart Target Big W places like that um, all of my tumblers I get from a few suppliers now uh, I know that Anna is about to uh, relaunch under the name together we create uh, she'll be stocking cups um, affordable blanks over in Perth stocks cups uh, creative blank is it creative label blanks they stock cups anywhere else that you know of um, that sells cups drop them in the comments now and help our newbie friends out this cup was a order for a rainbow so I am this range came very very close to kicking Freddo out of top spot for me this is what came in it's all um, quotes from the castle which is like one of my favorite movies ever so that just made it even more appealing but we're using these six tonight from the castle range from sparkles by carby this is suffering your jocks it's not a house it's a home it's the vibe of it this is we're going to bonnie doon this is straight to the pool room and this one is tell him he's dreaming so we're going to use all of them on this cup tonight as we finish up with hang on i'll check the comments first um so thank you like me I'm old turn 60 late November Joanne my mum's 60 next uh, not this coming Sunday but the Sunday after she's turning 60 61 was a good year uh, gee, I love that glitter uh, which glitter these ones this is tambourine and this is Freddo 
from Sparkles by Carby Designs. Last November, oh, last November, I'm a November baby too, Joanne. What day in November? I'm the 9th of November. Um, what's that glitter called again? Um, it's talking about the tambourine and the freddo that I just put up, Sonia. That's what that was. Oh, Anna's just answered. Okay. Sorry, I'm still catching up. What type of sandpaper? Um, I did cover this in the last one where we did uh, glittering your first tumbler. Uh, Dorothy, but I use I use a big one and a fine one. <laughs> um, I just use the wet and dry sandpaper. Um, I can never remember the what's it called the size, um, but you want one that's rather I don't want to say thick, coarse. You need a coarse one and you need a super fine one as well. Um, but to sand your base, I use the coarse one. Um, and I can never remember what it is. I usually just take a little bit in with me and match it up by sight. Um, sorry, just catching up. Natalie, that's okay. You haven't missed a whole lot, sweetheart. Um, I have not found diamond coat going hot, but I use a medium sized cup to mix. Um, yes, epoxy can heat up. Um, I've never used an epoxy that's gotten so hot that I can't handle it. Um, but I know that they are out there, especially if you're doing like the big river tables and stuff like that. Um, I know that that stuff gets quite, quite burny. Quite ouchies if you touch it. Yes, and I also spray alcohol into my moulds before I pour the resin. That just helps with any bubbles underneath. Uh, the last topic that I have tonight, if nobody's got any further question, holy crap, all of these comments are coming in big loads. Um, we're just talking tumbler. Kayla, I have a birthday twin. Hello. Sorry, just bring... Thank you, Danny. Yes, um, the 80 grit and the 220. Um... The 220 is the fine one that I use. I think this might be 120, but yes, you're right. 80 grit and 220 grit are the two sizes that you need to start for the sandpaper. Thank you so much. Um, I'm assuming that if I have an Audi white tumbler, I need to strip it first. Donna, no you don't, sweetheart. Um, without getting into the should not be named debate, me personally, I would just give it a good sanding, right? Not so much that the paint starts to come off, but enough that you can see the texture of the sanding in it, just to give the epoxy something to grip to, and then away you go, okay? And being white, you've just saved yourself having to spray paint the base coat. So there's that too. Um, I think I wanna do this as a swirl. That's what I think I wanna do with this. Okay, so the last thing that I wanted to discuss, which I'm trying to stall just while I do this glitter, I think I might end up just wrapping up the live. But I wanted you to see how pretty these rainbows were. That didn't work at all. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? <coughs> Excuse me, I got this, um, uh, this box uh, early December um, but I was gonna put it away so that my kids had something to give me for Christmas um, I have not displayed that amount of self-control in quite a long time um, I was quite proud of myself um, but I was so impressed with it look at that isn't that pretty okay so I'm gonna stop playing with that just so we can wrap up this live because I have no idea how long we've been going about an hour. I'm sure you all want to get on with your Friday nights and it is a huge load of information in one hit. So we do apologize. But we're going to talk micas and pigments, right? Pigment powders and mica powders, technically speaking, are two very different things. 
right? They are the same kind of medium, but they are two completely different looks. And I'm just going to grab two so that I can show you. This one and this one. Okay. Um, no, not that one. Okay. This is a pigment powder. So you see how it just looks like, um, like it, it's just colored pigment. It looks like, um, like the old paint powders. Does anybody remember the old paint powders where you had to mix it with a little bit of water and you could make your own paints, right? No sparkle, no shimmer, no pearl, no pretty, just the pigment. These are pigments, okay? Matte colors. Micas, however, see that pearlescent effect to it? That shimmer to it? Try and get my big head out of the way so that you can see. See the light? There we go. See how it shimmers? A mica powder shimmers, sparkles, has pearl in it, right? It's not just flat. So that is the difference between a mica powder and a pigment powder. Pigments are just colored dust, basically. Um, they're usually made out of um, natural things, um, but they are you always matte, right? They're always flat colors. Micas can shimmer, they can sparkle. Um, I do have... This is also considered a mica powder. You can see that? See how it's more sparkly than pearly? Right, still considered a mica. Anything that has that extra dimension to it where it's not just matte is a mica powder. These are both from Together We Create from Anna. Right, this one is from A1 Pigments. It came in the sample pack. It is called Blue Neon. Okay. But they are the difference between a mica and a pigment. Um, a lot of people don't actually know that and they will call pigments micas, they'll call micas pigments. They'll put them all under the same category because they think that they're the same thing. Technically speaking, it's the same kind of medium but two different looks. It would be like saying um, a holographic glitter and a metallic glitter are the same thing. Technically, yes, they're both glitters but they have completely different looks. Okay, so if you want that shimmer effect to it, make sure you get mica powders and not pigment powders. And that's basically all that I have for you this evening for our tips, tricks and terminologies. Now, if you are catching the replay and you've made it this far, congratulations. <laughs> if you have any comments or questions after I hit the end button, please still leave them in the comments. We will still see them and we will still try and answer your questions. Um, same goes for anybody that was watching tonight. If you go away from this and you watch the replay, um, or you've just got something on your mind and you want to come back, just leave your questions in this live, uh, just in case somebody has the same thought process as you, and we will come back and answer in the comments section offline. I'm doing some shopping with you real soon. Uh, Joanne, she's planning on opening at the beginning of February, so make sure you keep an eye out, but I'll let Anna post the link to her group in the comments. Um, Laurel, you are so welcome. Um, sorry if it's been a little bit boring. Um, <laughs> when you want to put a lot of, especially if it's not tutorial style, when you're trying to cram a lot of information into a short amount of time, um, it's, I'm really worried that lives like this become a little bit seminar-ish, like you feel like you're back in uni. So I apologize if that's the vibe that you got tonight. That's why we ended up voting on you guys watching me do stuff. Um, instead of just like I had a slideshow prepared. So it probably worked well that my son hurt himself the other day. Don't tell him that. But he hurt himself the other day and I had to postpone the live. Otherwise you would have gotten a really boring ass slideshow. Um, but yeah, I am sorry that the live was delayed. Um, my twins turned 10 on Tuesday. Um, my 
uh, son does cheerleading um, and tumbling and I bought him an air track for his birthday and he landed the wrong way we thought he'd broken his foot um, no breaks uh, he did hurt the ligament that connects through his big toe down into his foot um, so he's been told he's got to be careful for the next few days um, but yeah no I, I he's not a kid to really complain when he hurts himself he's pretty cruisy um, and when he landed the noise that he made like I, I'm not a hospital person but we were there pretty quickly so I do apologize for that uh, it's been a while since we've had to take a trip to hospital with him though so I was grateful for that um, we've only got two actually I'm gonna do the green and oh, I should have done the green here that's what I'm gonna do actually. I just want to get all these colors down um, Sam will be listing these on her website very very soon so I'm trying to like do a sneaky little plug for this range <laughs> while we're doing the live um, just because it, it, it is it's so pretty I'm gonna get rid of the toffee apple that wants to stick around And then I'll show you the rainbow and then I'll let you guys go. But the next one will be, I'll just check the date, I think it's the 19th. Yes, the next one will be on the 19th. We are doing ink swirls. Um, there's a few different ways of doing inks. I will be showing you all the different ways. Um, we did see the post about how to get that blue lightning bolt effect. We are going to be covering that in that live as well. Um, which is why I haven't bothered to do a separate demonstration. Because I know that that was coming up. So we'll be covering that as well. Okay, so starting from here. That is straight to the pool room. The blue is we're going to Bonnie Doon. The pink, which is, there's two different pinks. There's this like corally pink, and then there's a fluoro pink as well in the range. This is suffering your jocks. This is, it's not a house, it's a home, is the orange. Uh, the yellow is, it's the vibe of it. And the green is, tell him he's dreaming. So that is the castle range. And it is a really pretty, it's like a mix of um, opals and some silver flashes in there. It's just a really pretty, pretty, pretty. So I just thought I'd give that a plug because I did see that she was going to be listing that very, very soon. So that's that. And I'm going to finish that off and then she'll have her rainbow. Thank you very much for joining me this evening, guys. Um, again, any questions or comments, please leave them. Otherwise, I'm going to do a quick check. You've seen the purple. What's your group, Anna? I'll let Anna link you, but it is called Together We Create. Natalie, um, twins are 22. My twins turned 10 on um, Tuesday. So thank you for telling me that because it means that there's hope for me yet. I'm, I, I may survive this yet. <laughs> um, I actually... Um, I've got an, an older, like an older kid as well. Um, my t my twins turned ten on the fifth. Like I just said, he turned eleven today. Um, so for three days every year for the past decade, I've had three kids the same age for three days before my eldest turns the next year. So that's a, a little, that's my little claim to fame, I suppose. I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend that close of a gap for anybody. But it's you know, I'm, we're surviving. We're, we're a decade in and they're still alive so I must be doing something right okay and on that note of good for me for keeping my children breathing for a decade I deserve a gold star <laughs> I'm gonna leave you oh, it sucked in Anna I, I, yeah nah um, between like four and seven my twins are a nightmare and they're still a nightmare but they're not as big of a nightmare like they're a nightmare that I can have a little bit more fun with now that they're getting a little bit older as well um, but yeah, no, you can, you can keep your six and girls. I couldn't have everybody. Anna's got five girls. So when you say your prayers tonight, make sure you add her to your prayer list because she does have five girls. I've got two boys and a girl and one girl's enough. 
all right guys i will see you on the 19th otherwise enjoy the rest of your night and thank you for listening to my ted talk Bye.